Okay, you're welcome to Black Belt Interviews with me, Master David Watson. I'm very uh, delighted to say that I'm joined today on another podcast with uh, Phil Hawkins. Welcome, sir. Good to be here. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Um, we know each other from, from my side of things a long time ago when I was competing as a colour belt. And uh, you tended to be the centre referee at a lot of the tournaments, so I so got to know you. And uh, recently I spoke to Grandmaster Peter Harkis about the podcast, and he said, you've got to speak to um, Mr Hawkins. So here we are, delighted you're here. And the reason he said that was that all the people that you've interviewed over the years in your training times, uh, some real quite outstanding practitioners, famous people in the ICF world, so, um, and that does include, so your, your beginning, sir, was um, your own training began with? I started uh, training with uh, Mr. Roger Koo at Twickenham Taekwondo School. That was part of the UKTA ITF. Mr. Koo was a very good instructor, instructor uh, technically. The class was very disciplined. It was a great place and opportunity to learn. The grading instructor was obviously first Grandmaster Riki Ha, and we were very fortunate to have him as our grading examiner. He used to do a grading every six weeks or three months. Um, as you know, First Grandmaster E is one of the best technical technicians of Taekwondo. Um, and he's known for his loyalty to General Choi. And it was an honor to grade under him. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so um, very close to the source, like you said, uh, First Grandmaster E, you heart, and uh, Roger Q. Uh, and then yourself and uh, during that period of time uh, what, what kind of time are we talking about here so the uh... Uh, I started in 79 so that's when uh, that's when I started at um, uh, the UKTA uh, it was it was a good time and like anything else um, at that time you had combat and fighters magazine predominantly as well as karate uh, an oriental up arts magazine and reading those magazines it inspired my interest in taekwondo and the people who developed taekwondo i've always enjoyed history so as time went on i was fortunate enough to be able to train and interview uh, many of the pioneering masters yeah very much so and, and just um and speaking to you about those people that, you, that you've interviewed um some of them passed, of course, now, um, but you, you actually spoke to them very much in their prime years, somewhat, um, even, even John Che, is that right? You managed to interview John Che? I, I was lucky enough to interview John Choi. Um, in 1990, I went to Witten, I believe it is, in Germany. It's near Dortmund. Um, there was a one-week ITF instructor's course there. And at the end, there was a grading. Uh, Grandmaster Harkis, Grandmaster Sutherland, Mr. Nguyen and myself. Myself and Mr. Nguyen graded for fourth degree and Grandmaster Sutherland graded for fifth degree. Um, it was a very, very good course. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go along with Grandmaster Harkis to General Choice Hotel and interview him. So wow. that was good because it was, you, don't get time to spend with General Choi and ask questions. I I would love to have been in a position to do the interview later on because your knowledge is better. Yeah. You'd have more questions to ask, but it was very good. Although I was nervous, General Choi put me very much at ease. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's amazing isn't it? that you, you were able to do that. And a lot of these interviews you, you've done over the years, you, you documented them, you wrote them for magazines. You transcribe them, is that right? Yeah, a lot of the interviews, they've gone into uh, Combat magazine, they've gone into Taekwondo Times, they've gone into Korean and Oriental Arts magazines, uh, MAI, they went into the ITF magazine as well, so, and totally Taekwondo magazine. So they've gone into all the magazines. Yeah, yeah, and I think over the years, people who knew you back then uh, have obviously known you as the, the, the man of history along with the one or two other people in the type on their world. And uh, like you say, you've been able to speak to these uh, prominent people, uh, or perhaps the founder. Um, so how about some of the other interviews that you've had? And, and you 
you said General Chang once, was it twice or? I interviewed General Choi on two occasions and the interview I did was put into Combat Magazine. Yeah. Um, I'm is that thinking- still available? Is that still readable now? I, you may be able to get it somewhere on the internet. Um, I mean, that was in 1990. Yes. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a long time ago now. Yeah, of course. So, so do you remember any of the questions you asked General Chang? I do. Um, one of the questions asked General Choi is who the first masters of Taekwondo were. And he said Grandmaster Nam Tehi and Grandmaster Han Chak Yo. But more interestingly, I remember asking him if he'd ever met or trained with um, Grandmaster Gishin Fanakushai. And he said that he had not met him or trained with him. So that, that was another question. Um, I'll be honest, I can't remember all the questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So you mentioned someone's name there. Can you just clarify who that was that he hadn't, uh, that you said he hadn't trained with? It was Gishin Fanakushai, and he was the founder of uh, Shotokan Karate. Right. So when General Choi was in Japan, I was uh, inquisitive as to whether he'd met and trained with him. And right. He hadn't. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. And that's sort of clarified there. Um, so, you yeah, any other questions that you had for General Choi that he, that, was any that he found um, he had to think about, or he was quite open and. No, General Choi. He, he was very open, actually. Um, I think he actually enjoyed doing an interview because there was only Grandmaster Hug, myself, and General Choi. Yeah. So I think he, I think he enjoyed that, and he 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 seemed relaxed, which put me at ease. Yeah, yeah, of course. So it, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. In fact, then you you just been on the back of a, a week's course with him, and obviously later on it became much less than that. I only did a two and a half day, three day seminar. It was it was a week's course, and it was hosted by uh, Grandmaster Lee Ki Young in yeah. uh, Germany. Um, it was it was a very good intensive course, yeah. very good. Okay, so what was the first interview you ever conducted? The first interview I conducted was with uh, Grandmaster Chun Ki Tae in Toronto, Canada, and that was in nineteen. 88, when we went to Toronto and we trained at Grandmaster Park Stojang, and he, all, he was also hosting a tournament at that time. Uh, Grandmaster Chunky Tae's Dojang, if I remember correctly, wasn't that far from Grandmaster Park Jung Su's Dojang, which I think was on Yong Street. Uh, Grandmaster Chunky Tae. I remember asking him what degree he was, and his answer was, I'm seventh degree ITF. He was also one of the few people who trained directly with General Choi, and he also trained directly with Grandmaster Choi Yong Saul of Hapkido. So there's not many people, I don't believe, who's trained directly with the two of them. Uh, Grandmaster Chunky Tay is in General Choi's. 1972 book, which I believe people call the Bible. He's in there, he did, demonstrates a lot of self-defense techniques towards the back of the book. He's also in there demonstrating other techniques. The other thing that's interesting about General Choi and Grandmaster Choi Yong Saul is they were both born on the same day. And another thing which is extraordinary is they both passed away on the same day so they were both born on the 9th of november and they both passed away on the 15th of june although grandmaster Choi Yong Saul was passed away before general choice he was quite a bit older so that is quite um something i think i put on my facebook page a few years ago uh but grandmaster chunky tay he also at the front of general choice book there's a portion with the attacking tools, and he helped General Choi compile that for his book as well. When I trained with Grandmaster Chunky Tay, I asked him to demonstrate some Hapkido techniques. Uh, I think the best way to describe his technique on myself is controlled pain. He was a very, very good technician, uh, very controlled 
but you were definitely in pain when he applied the techniques. So that, that was a good memory. Yeah. So your Taekwondo traveling, you're meeting all these people. Um, you talked about Canada. Uh, is that right? You went to Korea as well? Yes. Um, I was very fortunate in that I met Dr. Heon Kim. Uh, Dr. Ian Kim used to come to the UK to do seminars. And he was invited here by Master Bob Bannon, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Again, Master Bannon was a very good martial artist and a very good man. And Dr. Kim used to come over and give seminars in Norwich. And as I got to know him more and more, I found that he had a great knowledge of history. As a teacher and a technician, Dr. Kim is second to none. With regards history of Korean martial arts, he's written books on the history of Taekwondo, the history of Hapkido. And he, he, he's a great, great scholar. Um, and he's traveled around the world interviewing people and documenting their history and collaborating it and putting it into his books. And I was lucky enough to accompany him to Korea. And when we went to Korea, I was lucky enough to accompany him to some of the interviews he was going to do. Right. So I did my own interviews and I'm very yeah. grateful to Dr. Kim for that. And also for helping translate some of the interviews as well. Yeah, so yeah. that was good. Yeah. Um, the first person I interviewed in Korea was in Seoul. And that was Grandmaster Peck Jun Gi who is in General Choi's book. Again, he's very senior in, with regards to Taekwondo history. He initially started out training under Grandmaster Lee Wong Guk at the Chung Da Kwan, and many of his classmates at that time were people like Grandmaster Nam Tae Grandmaster Ko Jae Chung, Grandmaster Han Cha Kyo. So that, that was some history he had. Then when he went into the military, he was, carried on his training and teaching. And when the first Taekwondo demonstration team went aboard in 1959 to Vietnam, he was chosen wow. from the military personnel. Yeah. And I remember he said that for one month prior, General Choi was the leader of the team. For one month prior to that, Grandmaster Nam Tae He was teaching them and training them every day along with General Choi. Yeah. Um, he, he was, a, Grandmaster Peck Jung Gi was a very proud man. He was very proud of his military career. He was very proud of his uh, Taekwondo career as well. And I remember that when he came into the restaurant where myself and Dr. Kim were waiting for him, as soon as he came in, you knew that he had a military background by his walk, right. his presence. Yeah. Um, he was in his 70s at that time, and he was still going to the gym three days a week. Um, yeah. He was very yeah. open to talk. He, he's a very, very nice man to me. One of the other things is that in 1965, he was the chief instructor uh, in Vietnam for Taekwondo instructors. And he had applied for that position and he told me that to a degree, he was slightly surprised that he got it. He also said that General Choi came to Vietnam at that time. And although General Choi had left the military, he brought over his manuscripts for the Chun Chi Dangun patents, etc., And he met <coughs> Ramos Peck Jung Gi and he, they sat down and General Choi explained the patterns for him, to him and the reasons for the patterns. And Ramos Petron Gi said that he liked that reasoning and therefore he implemented the patterns. Right, right. And he said his relationship with that at that time with General Choi was a friendship because General Choi had left the um, military at that time. Yeah. He'd obviously gone to Malaysia yeah. as an ambassador and then came back. And also at that time, Grandmaster Peck Jun Gi was in charge of General Choi's security. So that was, but he yeah. had great memories of um, touring in Vietnam. Yeah. And he's, he had great memories of his time at the Chung Da Kwan as well. And he had 
a lot of respect and appreciation to Grandmaster Lee Wong Gok, who's his original instructor. Yeah. And after that, he actually went and taught Taekwondo in Japan because I think he worked at the consulate there. So he was probably the first person to teach Taekwondo in Japan. And he was very senior and he was a seventh degree with the Oda Kwan. So the kind of people you're talking about, um, we're going to supply pictures and images on the, on the YouTube clips and elsewhere to support what we're talking about so people can recognize the kind of people you've met and uh, interviewed uh, throughout the years. Uh, so you was in Korea, you, you had your first interview. Who else did you meet out there? Well, one of the other people we met out there was um, we went to Kwangju. And uh, that was quite an experience because I went with uh, Dr. Heon Kim and his brother-in-law and we went on the KTX train. And the KTX train is doing 180, 200 mile an hour. So although Kwangju was quite away from Seoul, the distance was short when we were on the train. Yeah, yeah. And we went to Chungnam University there and we met uh, Grandmaster Kim Sul Run. And the interesting thing with Grandmaster Kim Sul Run is really he's had three careers. He's had a military career, a Taekwondo career, and then he's had an alternative medicine career right. and um, acupuncture. And he had a very good military career and he was stationed in Dalat in Vietnam. And he taught Taekwondo out there. And some of the pictures will put are taken when he's in Vietnam. Yeah. Again, a very educated man, a very proud man, very open with regards to the interview. And again, I, I couldn't have done the interview without um, Dr. Hyun Kim helping translate. Yeah. Although, uh, Grandmaster Kim Sul Rung spoke very good English because to be an officer at that time in the Korean army, you had to be able to speak English. Right. Um, so some of the interview was done in English and some yeah. of it was done in Korean. Uh, but he he was very good. He had a good office there. Like I said, he was in Vietnam. He'd started his training in uh, Kwangju as well. And his original instructor was from the Chung Le Quang. Uh, when he returned from Vietnam to Korea, he wanted to uh, train directly with General Choi. So he was another one who went to General Choi's residence and trained directly with General Choi. And then the opportunity came up to, they would, Iran was looking for a Taekwondo instructor. So he was one of the two instructors who went to Iran. The other one was Captain Kim. And he was only there six months, then he returned to Korea. So Grandmaster Kim Sul Run was the pioneer. There was no Taekwondo in Iran before that. Right. And he, when we were doing the interview, he spoke very highly of the Iranian people. He very much enjoyed his time in Iran. And after, I think he was out there perhaps two or three years, then he returned to Korea. And in the eighties, he was given a humanitarian award from the United Nations for his work in Sri Lanka. Right. Then he was at the university, he was teaching uh, alternative medicine and acupuncture. And so he's done a book on acupuncture. Right. And later on, he did a biography, his, uh, my, life into, my Life with Taekwondo. So again, it, it was a pleasure to meet him. And yeah. I think one of the other things is, again, he's another one who's in General Choi's book. There's the well-known picture of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going to Iran and what a lot of people don't realize and I never realized is the picture at the back of the book where it says Korean Infantry Academy uh, that was taken in Kwangju and Grandmaster Kim Sul Run is the man standing on the podium well, so yeah. again, he ha he has a very rich history with regards to Taekwondo. So, yeah, yeah. Excellent I mean to me it's been great to place you know to record their experiences like you've done it's amazing, isn't it? Good it is, and I, I feel very fortunate to have had, had the opportunity to go to um, Korea and meet them. In truth, I didn't know that we were going to go and meet Grandmaster Kim Sul Run until a day or so before and Dr. Kim said, we are going to Kwangju tomorrow. And when right. he said, who are uh, we going to go and meet Grandmaster Kim Sul Run? And I knew the name instinct instinctively so yeah it, it was yes. it was a wonderful experience going to Korea um the next person who I was 
uh, fortunate to me, was Grandmaster Kim Jong Soo. And if anyone's got the 1972 book, Grandmaster Kim Jong Soo is in that book everywhere. Yeah. Um, at the time, he was a salaried uh, by the ITF, and he was also ITF chief instructor. He, the same, had gone, come through the military, um, been a military uh, yeah. taekwondo instructor, and he was also one of the people on the first course in 1968. And the instructor on that course, I believe, was Grandmaster JC Kim. So he he has a great history, but. The reason there's lots of pictures of him in the book is I asked him this. He said he was in charge of collating all the pictures from around the world. Right. And also, if they were short of pictures for a particular technique or whatever, then he was do the technique. So if there's the one in there with the dobok, the one when he's punching the candle, and there's multiple other ones in there. Yeah. And he does two patterns in the book and as well, and I'll be honest, I can't remember which patterns they are at the moment. I think it yeah. may be Jungan and Kodak. I'm not 100% yeah. sure on that. But he, he's featured extensively in the yeah. book. Um, and also, if you look at the pictures of the 1971 course, he's obviously pictured in that with General Choi and the other masters at the time. When General Choi left Korea, um, there were many people or countries who asked for Grandmaster Kim soo to come and teach. And he, unfortunately, at that time, wasn't able to leave Korea. Right. So that, that was um, a bit sad in some ways. Yeah. But it's, you know, to be ITF chief instructor shows the caliber yeah. of his standard. And um, one of the other pictures we'll show is the plaque that uh, General Choi gave to uh, Grandmaster Kim Soo And when we went to meet him, myself and Dr. Kim, we went to his office. And in his office, he had the plaque and he had some other memorabilia. He also had a wonderful photo album. And Dr. Kim took uh, photos of that. But he had a wonderful photos in there of his history with um, Taekwondo ITF and that at the time. Yeah. So, it was, it was, again, good to meet him. And afterwards, we went and had a meal. And that was wonderful as well. Um, and we sat on the floor in traditional. Okay. And that was, that, that was quite an experience. And I have to be honest, my leg went a bit dead. <laughs> but no, that, that was good. And I, I, would, I would tell you this. When we came out from interviewing him, the first car I saw had a registration, the registration number was 1577. And my plaque number is 1577. Wow. And you can read into that what you will. Yeah, you've mentioned and, a few coincidences. And I wanted to get a photo of it, but it obviously it was gone. But yeah, I, yeah. you know what, that was, that was uncanny. Yeah, yeah. Really. That was, that was uncanny. So, um, like you said, we're going to put pictures together. To the names, so people can recognise it in the yeah. book. Um, so, you know, I, all the articles that I, interviews I've done, they've all been published. Yeah. Um, although they're, that was a long time ago now. Yeah. But um, it, was, it was a great experience going to Korea. Yeah. And, um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I also went to the Cookie One and um, some historical sites. And that. Yeah. So it was, it was great. It was a great time. And the last person I met out there, uh, we went to the Hotel Lottie um, and we met uh, Grandmaster Lee Yusun. And Grandmaster Lee Yusun is another one. He's got a wonderful history. And Grandmaster Kim Jong Soo spoke very highly of him with regards to his power, yeah. his kicking ability, his spinning kicks, his jumping kicks. And when you look in uh, the General Choi book, my favorite photo of all. Taekwondo photos is Grandmaster the use of doing the flying sidekick uh, with the palace in the background. Um, yeah. For me, I think it's the technique is absolutely perfect. Yeah, and yeah. he also does jumping turning kick in there, but you can see his technical ability. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is something else. And uh, when I was in the BTC, <coughs> uh, Ian Morrison Wheeler, 
he was at the BTC and he started his Taekwondo training in um, Holland. And he used to talk about his instructor there. And he's, and I asked him and he said, oh, I can't remember. Couldn't remember his name, who he right. trained with. Uh, but it was Grandmaster Lee Yusun. Yeah, yeah. And I put that together because there was an article in Korean Karate and Karate and Oriental Arts. Yeah. And it was submitted by Ian yeah. Wheeler. And the picture is of Grandmaster Lee Yusun. Again, it's a perfect blind sidekick, although they spelt his name wrong. Right, so right. that was good. He, again, he came through teaching Taekwondo military. Uh, he also was a pioneer instructor. He went to Hong Kong to teach. Right. He went to France. He was taught in France. And he went to Holland and he replaced Grandmaster Park Jung Soo when he went to Holland. Um, and Grandmaster Park Jung Soo left him a tape. So when he got there, there was a tape recording saying, I've gone to Canada, this right. is et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So when he was in Holland, he traveled around Holland doing grading and that. Uh, and he is also in a lot of the 1971 instructor courses as well. So yeah. he very, very good ITF. And he lives in America now where he went to teach. He was teaching in Texas, in Midland, Texas. Okay. Um, so yeah. he again is retired now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, very, very good and one thing i will also add is uh, i've been very fortunate to meet or train uh, with the pioneers and they all very proud of their history in taekwondo but they all speak very highly of general Choi. yeah and um general Choi, from my point of view he's given the gift of taekwondo to the world but his legacy yeah you know and when you look at how Taekwondo is spread around the world, and it's, it's, it is around the world everywhere, yeah. irrespective of race, yeah. etc. You know, he's done a wonderful job, and it is, it's a great legacy that General Choice left in the ITA. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I have great admiration for General Choi, and That's I have good. great admiration for all the pioneers, because yeah. I think General Choi was the founder, but he had some wonderful men around yeah. him, from Grandmaster Nemti, he to, to all the other pioneers, you know, and they, they've done a, a wonderful job. And I, a lot of, I've, sadly, some of the pioneers have passed away and it's 20 years this year that General Choi has passed. Yeah. So if you have the opportunity to go and train with any of the original pioneers, or even, I know last weekend you went to train with Grandmaster Boss, yeah. then you should take that. Yeah, so because. People aren't here forever. Exactly, the people before us were closer to the source, they have the experiences, like you said, and the, those of them that were that working with General Chain personally, again, like you said, they, they still speak so highly of them, the respect they have for him after all these years, and uh, uh, and people realise that this is all down to General Chain, the whole thing. It is, and, um, you know, like one of the other questions I remember asking General Choi, I said, two questions actually that come to mind now is I said to him, what do you say to people who say you aren't, you aren't the founder? And his answer was, well, who is? You know, okay. and the other question, I said to him, what does Taekwondo mean? And his answer was moral culture. That's what his answer was. Yes. And, um, you know, I think one of the other things, whether you're, you're training in Taekwondo, if you like another activity, if you like tennis, football, motor racing, yeah. golf, it's very hard to have access to, you know, people like Tiger Woods, yeah. uh, you know, footballers, yeah. whoever, you yeah. know, you get Federer, yeah. you know. So in Taekwondo, we're lucky we have access to those people and you can actually go and train with them. Yeah. So why you've got the opportunity, it's, it's worth doing, definitely. Yeah. And I feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity to train and meet um, the Pioneer and Grandmasters. And I feel very fortunate to have had Grandmaster E, as yeah. Chief Instructor, and to have graded under Grandmaster, Grandmaster E as well. Yeah. And some of the pictures we'll put on there um, from Jim, Grandmaster E's book and General Choice book, um, they're great techniques. 
So I hope that people have enjoyed no, very much. listening to what I've got to talk about. No, I talk too much. Because, um, yeah, you certainly build a bigger picture for everyone. Because people starting to open wondering recently, that might have been a year or two, or you know, five years ago, uh, you won't have access to the information you're we'll sharing today about these pioneers that people where it all began. And it truly is a remarkable story in of itself, isn't it? But you got to meet the individuals, to, to learn from them, to experience their uh, to experience their their story firsthand, and to really pick up on that authenticity. And like you said, John Che, I was asked, you asked him, what is type one means in moral culture? So that goes beyond the physical training, doesn't it? He's talking about the, the philosophy behind it all, and. Uh, I think it's very important that we, we remind people and give access to this kind of... Uh... And I think the other thing, um, I've enjoyed interviewing and getting to know the history better, but um, people like Glamos and Vitali, they've done a wonderful job. And if you yeah. can look at some of the work that Glamos and Vitali's yeah. done, and also the book by um, Alec Gillis, the books by Dr. Heon Kim, they're all yeah. good books. And also you've got... Um, Taekwondo Times with Grandmaster Wu Jing Chung, and you've got Totally Taekwondo with um, uh, Stuart Anslow. Yeah. And Stuart's done some good books as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of information out there. Yeah. And the other person I would say is uh, Grandmaster Kim Su, who is in uh, Texas. He puts some wonderful history on. Yeah. And he was black belt correspondent in Korea. And the photographs and the history that he puts on goes right back to the 50s. So yeah. I would have a look at his site as well because there's Taekwondo is rich in history. Yeah. Um, it really is. So yeah. I hope people have enjoyed it and I thank you for asking me to come. So Yeah, yeah no, wonderful. I'm glad you're so pleased that you managed to uh, meet up and discuss these things and bring to attention all, all that you've, uh, you've been able to do in your Taekwondo time. And uh, yeah, I'm sure um, once, put, once people see these pictures and recognise these people from Taekwondo book, then they can obviously uh, search these things up because there's, there's information on the internet about it as well, isn't there? There's, I think that's a great thing nowadays with the internet. Yeah. There's so much on there, but you have to be careful um, yeah, what's correct and what isn't. And that's why I like, um, I like Dr. Hyun Kim and I like uh, Grandmaster Vitali yeah. because Grandmaster Vitali does it with a forensic toothbrush. Absolutely. <laughs> but he goes, what I do is yeah. I scratch the surface yeah. and I'm the messenger. What yeah. Grandmaster Vitali does is he goes very deep yeah. and gets the, the documentation. Yeah. So, you know, Excellent. I have that great admiration for people like that. Yeah, so you can say Taekwondo, it has its history and that is part of the martial art, isn't it? It's very much part of it. Yeah. You know, so. If right. you further your knowledge, you want to develop yourself as a student, you want to embrace things further in your own training. Inevitably, you'll come back to finding out how the pioneers, General Che, the way that they trained, the philosophy behind their training. I think it's a very important part of it, to be honest with yeah. you. know, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Especially for all of us that are getting older, the competitions are behind us now, maybe we're the officials now, the organisers. But to see the, the, the older grandmasters training still like, in conversation with yourself telling you that they train every day and, and that's the way it is they still can perform and they look very fit and well and then i think the other thing in this country we have um you have some great grandmasters here now you know and there's i know there's different federations but e-federation has got a different grandmaster yeah. and they're, they're very good technically and there's a lot of knowledge in this country yeah. that can be passed on fantastic all right thank okay, you sir. thank you very much thank you Great job. Thank you.